the people have spoken and the will of the people has been made known. Last week I posted a video on how to get a rear naked strangle without using your legs or what's better known as the straight jacket system. And if you haven't seen that video yet, go ahead and make sure to go back and watch that video. But at the very end of the video, I stopped it at a very crucial point of the video. And I told you guys, if you wanted to see the rest of the technique to like, comment, share, and to help the video get to 5,000 views and the people have spoken and the people said that they want to see the rest of the video. So it absolutely crushed it. It surpassed 5,000 views by now. Uh, it took only a few days. So this is what you guys wanted and this is what you guys are gonna get. As always, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate every single one of you that hits like. I appreciate every single one of you that comments on the video and I appreciate every single one of you that shares it. Uh, the better the videos do, the more motivated I'll be to post more videos. Um, the better I'll be able to justify spending time, time costs money, to, uh, to post more. So this is for all of you guys. Enjoy. All right, next one. Now, I had you guys practice from seated position initially in the class because honestly, it's one of the easiest uh, places to learn rear nakeds from, okay? Uh, one of the main reasons why it's easiest to learn from there is because there are no wedges inhibiting the movement of both of your arms, okay? When I am in a seated position with my opponent, from here, there's, again, like I said, there's nothing inhibiting our movement. My arms can move in a full range of motion. My elbows can retract as far back as they want, okay? And nothing stops them from moving. However, that's not true when we're actually down on the mat, right? So nine times out of 10, or I would say even higher than nine times out of 10, you don't see people fighting for rear nakeds from here, right? Where do people fight for rear nakeds? Off their side, okay? Now, that last technique I taught you works really well when we are on the underhook side. Why? There's nothing inhibiting my right elbow, right? So as I strip and he grabs my inside thumb, watch how I can pull back and go right back for my attack, just like I taught you guys. That's not true if we are on the overhook side. If I'm on the overhook side, now when I, no, oh, stay right there for a second. I strip his, now he gets my thumb, good. Now, what I just taught you guys of retracting your elbow, guess what? You can't retract your elbow. Why? The mat is physically in my way, okay? So it's nice when we're seated and it's nice when we're on the underhook side. But when we're on the overhook side, I can't do that technique. So then the question becomes, coach, what do I do then, all right? Now, from here, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to strip his thumb off, okay? So I'm gonna relinquish control of this hand to attack the thumb that's on my thumb because I don't have any, re any other choice because my elbow can't retract past the mat. So watch how I take my hand, thumb to thumb. You can hold a little bit tighter than that. Yep. Thumb to thumb, and I strip his hand off. Now the question becomes, coach, if you strip his hand off, won't he just take that hand and go right back? Exactly, yep, go. Inside thumb, absolutely he's gonna try to do that, okay? And what most people do to try to combat an inside thumb is they literally just tense up and try to fight muscle with muscle. So this is what they do. Once they free their hand, he goes to get inside thumb. You can grab it, grab it. And then you're back into a vicious cycle. Where from here, I'm trying to strip his hand. He covers my thumb. Good. I strip his and he gets right exactly. And that happens over and over again. And you never seem to make any advancement. Okay. What I'm going to show you guys to do is this time, Instead of fighting muscle with muscle, I want you guys to do something that's very counterintuitive, but it comes with time and with skill. I want you guys to stay very relaxed, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. Once I strip his hand off, this hand is not gonna tense up. If you get tense, he's gonna get a really easy grip. This hand's gonna stay very relaxed and very loose. And there's two things I'm gonna do with it. Number one, I'm gonna keep this hand relaxed. Number two, I'm gonna float this hand out here somewhere, okay? I'm not gonna take this hand and put this hand close to his chest because I, I cramp myself, my own workspace. So my hand stays out here somewhere and very relaxed and very loose so he can move, okay? So as he goes to grab inside thumb, I palm on my hand, the top position, did you guys see that? And now once I palm on my hands inside position, I can grab him. Now, what are both my hands doing? Top, top, position. top hand position, okay? That's what I've been telling you guys the whole time. If I have top hand position, he can't stop me from getting to his head. And I'm in my rear naked. Make sense? 
So what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to play a game where this hand is going to pommel. As he tries to grab my hand, I pommel my hand to top position. He tries to grab my hand, I pommel my hand to, to top position. Do you guys see that? It's, I'm telling you, it's friggin' difficult for him to catch this hand when it's out here and it's relaxed, okay? I know what he's going to do. I know what he has to do. If this hand stays back and retracted and it's not going to do anything, I'll go right across his face. No problem, okay? But he wants inside thumb. He's, he's good. He knows what he's doing. So as he goes to get inside thumb, I get top hand position. Does that make sense? And now from there, I start to launch all of my attacks, okay? On three. One, two, three. Rolling, you know, a little warm and not just completely cold, okay? Now... Last one we're gonna do is, I just showed you guys what to do if you fall to the strangle side and be able to finish, okay? Um, again, initially when I taught you guys all these techniques, I taught you guys seated, right? There's absolutely zero wedges around my body. It's one of the best environments to learn rear nakeds at first, because again, the limitations of the mat, the wedges around us are not there. But when it comes to actual application, when the mat and the wedges are there, there are some adjustments that you do have to make, okay? And just as the same way the mat stops me from being able to do certain things on the strangle side, the mat will also stop me from being able to do certain things on the underhook or quote unquote the weak side. Does that make sense, everybody? So understand, it's not about which side is, I don't like to think about it about strong versus weak side. I like to think overhook versus underhook. There's pros and cons, right? If I fall on the underhook side, the pro is if you guys my thumb, I can pull back, no problem. Like there's absolutely zero stopping me and I can come back in real aggressive, okay? However, the con of an underhook side is once I do get into my strangle position, it's extracting that secondary arm. That can be incredibly awkward, okay? If you guys will notice when we're seated, notice the position of my elbow. In a seated situation where I'm completely comfortable, watch how my elbow comes back. My wrist goes over my wrist, look at my elbow. And now I come into the strangle situation. So as you guys can see, there's quite a bit of movement my elbow needs to have in order to be able to come comfortably into a rear naked. I don't have that luxury when we're on the underhook side because as I said already, the mat's there. Now, you will have seen people teach techniques like say for example, we're right here, I shift up and off that shift up, I come into my strangle. I'm not saying these techniques are not legitimate. Uh, please understand me. I'm not saying that at all because I've seen very high level athletes teach the, these techniques. All I'm saying is that in all my years of experience, I've had a very, very hard time applying that specific method in my game, especially when the guy is bigger and stronger than me. Okay. Personally, I like techniques that no matter the size, the strength of the guy, I can bank on them and chances are they're going to work. Okay. So. This next technique I'm gonna show you, I have found to work very well, regardless of size, regardless of strength. What we're gonna do here is that instead of focusing on retracting our elbow all the way out, we don't have the luxury of doing that, and then coming into the strangle, when I'm on the bottom side, my hand's already in position, I'm ready to strangle. Watch how instead of going elbow first, I go wrist first. Watch my hand. Wrist first. Now, look at my head. My head stays in position. Okay, biggest mistake people make here is they remove their head out of the way to insert the, the, the secondary arm. If I remove my head out of the way, there's nothing under his head anymore. He goes to the mat and now I lost the guy, okay? What we're gonna do from here is as my <coughs> wrist goes out and away, look how my head stays in place and I focus on putting my wrist right under his neck, just like so, okay? So I wedge my fist under his jaw. So now, even if my head moves, get your head to the mat, He's not getting his head to the mat. This is a two by four holding him up. Does that make sense to you guys? It's literally his muscle fighting against my bone structure. I'm gonna win that fight every time, okay? From here, once I pl place my, uh, my, knuck my knuckles there, my head can make, can make as much space as it needs to to insert the strangle. Oftentimes, if you get it here, you don't even need to make that much space. From here, watch how my wrists just cross over each other and now I slide everything in and my strangle's in and set, okay? So again, this is contrasted with techniques where my elbow, just stay right there for a second. My elbow has to come all the way back. Look at my elbow coming all the way back. Elbow extracts first, then I go wrist over wrist. This one's different. I don't go with the elbow first. I go with the wrist first. I put my knuckles on the side of his head. He tries to get his head down. Go ahead, go ahead, turn, 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 turn. It's freaking difficult. It feels like there's a frame here and he's not gonna overcome that frame. And now from here, my wrist cross, 
and I finish the strangle. Does that make sense to you guys? So this is the last thing I want you guys to practice for your naked. On three, one, two, three.